Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Yes, I'm the person behind this channel. I've been thinking about appearing in videos for a long time, but due to some personal issues, it was never possible. I mentioned this here in a few videos, even because I couldn't record. I had to ask a few friends to do it for me. This is completely new to me, as English is not my first language. However, I hope you all enjoy it and can forgive any errors I may have made in certain parts. I purchased a brand new microphone. I want to create a different narration and I am even utilizing a new program on the computer. Anyway, I want to give this channel a whole new look. As you guys could notice, I still don't have a defined setting. And for now, I'm going to record in this one I'm in, my bedroom curtain. Well, that's it. I think I've talked too much here. Let's get to the point. Let's start by talking about Ruby Howard, one of the key figures in this case. Ruby had a tough childhood. Coming from a messed up family from the state of Louisiana in the United States, she didn't expect much from life. At 13 years old, she dropped out of school and decided to leave home to live on her own. During that period, she was already consuming alcohol excessively and had a multitude of emotional problems. Ruby wouldn't stay put anywhere. She was always moving from one place to another. Sometimes I would stay at friends' houses for a while, sometimes on the streets, and other times at Fling's houses. After a while, she encountered a boy called Dewey Morgan, and they began a romantic relationship. Dewey was a little older than Ruby, and just like her, he also came from a family with no structure. As you guys could tell, those two young individuals were far from having a stable life, and yet, Ruby ended up becoming pregnant. Later, on the 14th of March in 1999, she gave birth to a baby boy whom she named Wesley Dale Morgan. Wesley was born in good health, and this could potentially be the moment when the couple would grow closer and start following a better path. However, the opposite scenario occurred. Several months following the arrival of his son with Ruby, Dewey had no desire to establish a stable life and made the decision to end his relationship with the girl. But even with this separation, the former couple maintained a somewhat normal relationship, and Ruby would sometimes even take their son to visit his father. As I already mentioned, Ruby was always moving from one place to another, and even now being a mother, that hasn't changed. In 2001, she moved to a rented house in the city of Clinton, along with her new boyfriend, a 37-year-old man named Burnell Hilton. Despite growing apart from Dewey, the father of her child, Ruby still made sure to take the boy to visit his dad on the scheduled days. On the morning of May 15, 2001, Ruby was sitting on the porch of her house, accompanied by her son Wesley. While Wesley, who was only two years old at the time, was busy playing with his two dogs, Ruby decided to go in and take a look at the lunch that was cooking on the stove. That was approximately 9.45 a.m. in the morning, and Ruby spent about 10 minutes inside the house. She was home alone with Wesley, since Bernal, her new boyfriend, was at work. When Ruby came back outside, she noticed that Wesley wasn't in the backyard anymore. She searched for the boy for a few minutes, and after being unable to locate him, she contacted the police. Promptly, the authorities initiated the search for young Wesley. A team comprised of numerous police officers and volunteers commenced conducting the initial searches. At twilight, the Louisiana State Police joined the search team, which at that time comprised of local police officers and approximately 200 volunteers, including Wesley's father and a few inmates from prisons in the vicinity. Roadblocks were established, Multiple cars were examined, and numerous neighbors were interrogated, but nobody had any information. The police officers persisted. With the assistance of sniffer dogs, they thoroughly searched the dense forest in the vicinity, the hills, streams, and other areas that were more distant from the city. Several days later, the FBI and the National Guard became involved in the search. Cadaver sniffing dogs were used, Helicopters were also used, as well as a scanner that captures heat signatures in dense forests, creating a thermal image. In addition, the FBI employed ultraviolet lighting to conduct a thorough search for bloodstains 
in various locations where Wesley may have been present. In an effort to find the boy as quickly as possible, the governor of Louisiana at the time even declared a state of emergency in the city of Clinton to garner more attention to the case and funding for the search. It was days of incessant searching. The authorities meticulously searched every nook and cranny of the city and even the nearby forests. But still, even with all that concerted effort, nothing was found. With that, the authorities ultimately decided to call off the extensive search operation. During that time, the deputy chief of police even informed the reporters that they searched extensively for the boy in every possible location and stated that if Wesley was present, they would have discovered him. He said that from that moment on, the case ceased to be a disappearance case and became a case with suspicion of a crime and an investigation would be initiated. During the investigations, Ruby Howard, the mother of Wesley, was identified as the primary suspect in relation to whatever had occurred to her son. Her behavior was described as weird for a large part of the searches. Initially, she appeared indifferent to the entire situation. Certainly, she might have been in shock, and individuals react differently in such extreme circumstances. However, according to those who were near her at the moment, she showed no signs of being concerned about the loss of her son. Another aspect that gave rise to suspicion among the authorities was the fact that Ruby had recently made a purchase of a car, despite the fact that she was unemployed and her boyfriend did not have a sufficient income to afford it. When she was asked about the source of the money to buy that car, Ruby dodged the question and couldn't really explain the origin. Due to these reasons, Ruby was questioned on multiple occasions and also came under the surveillance of the police. The authorities had a strong suspicion that Ruby was directly involved in the disappearance of her son. Countless theories have been developed, but the one that gained the most strength was that Ruby sold her own son. Later on, both Ruby and Bernal were put through the polygraph test, commonly known as the lie detector. Bernal passed the test, but Ruby didn't. According to sources, after finding out that she had failed the polygraph test, Ruby freaked out and started crying, saying that she didn't want to spend the rest of her life in jail. Nevertheless, the polygraph test could not be utilized as evidence to definitively prove Ruby's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. To accomplish that, the police would require evidence and contingent upon the circumstances, possibly even witnesses. Therefore, although the authorities had suspicions, Ruby was not charged and was subsequently released on the same day. In the days that followed, Ruby reached out to the police on just one occasion to inquire about the progress of the investigation into her son's disappearance. Once again, the authorities found this behavior strange since usually relatives of crime victims tend to call once a day or more to find out about the progress of the investigations. It was like Ruby didn't really care much. Interestingly, a few weeks after Wesley showed up, Bernal, Ruby's boyfriend, got arrested on charges of taking a man's life back in 1998 in the city of Zachary, Louisiana. Bernal was cleared, but after that, he and Ruby broke up. Ruby did not stay alone for a long time. In July of the same year, she began a relationship with another man and approximately one week later, she relocated to live with him. Shortly after Ruby moved in with her new boyfriend, the police received a call stating that a boy who bore a strong resemblance to Wesley had been spotted in close proximity to a residence in the town of Clinton. The address of this house and the identity of its owner have never been publicly disclosed, but at the time, the police conducted a thorough search of the entire area and found nothing. For numerous individuals, including certain police officers, Wesley is still living. The most talked about theory, as I've already said, is that Ruby sold her own child. Despite the absence of solid evidence, one particular incident adds weight to the plausibility of this theory. In the year 2008, Ruby got arrested and accused of trying to sell her unborn child. In a quick investigation, 
it was discovered that in the previous year, 2007, she joined a closed group on a social network where members discussed surrogacy. There, Ruby posted an ad saying that for a small amount, she would give her child to someone who would take good care of him. One of the members of the group asked, how much are you going to sell your kid for? And Ruby replied, I think we can work something out. Send me a private message. The couple who expressed interest in Ruby's proposal did not have an adequate amount of money to legally adopt a child. Due to that, they contacted Ruby and even entered into a contract stipulating that she would relinquish her child to them in exchange for a sum of $2,000. To evade the law, the contract stipulated that the money given to Ruby wasn't for purchasing the child, but for covering medical expenses instead. However, when Ruby gave birth to a baby girl in early 2008, she ended up getting attached to her daughter and decided not to give her to the couple as agreed upon. That obviously made the couple very angry and they made the decision to report Ruby to the police. The authorities investigated the situation and found out that Ruby had indeed spent the money given to her on medical expenses. Due to the lack of additional evidence indicating Ruby's true intention to sell her daughter, she was once again not faced with any charges. The evidence that the police had against her was at most enough to accuse her of fraud. Wesley's disappearance is still talked about to this day. The authorities update his photo periodically using aging software that shows how, supposedly, the boy would look like nowadays. Additionally, the authorities have provided a reward of $10,000 for any information that helps them locate Wesley's current location. Ruby Howard still lives in the state of Louisiana. She got married and now has two daughters. They say she got her act together and kicked her alcohol addiction. In the year 2019, a reporter asked Ruby about the disappearance of her son, to which she replied that it hurt to remember that time. Those were turbulent years of her life, and today she would never leave one of her children alone for 15 minutes. She also said that she believes Wesley is alive, and that one day he will come back home. Wesley Dale Morgan has been missing for almost 23 years. If he is still alive, he has already become a 24-year-old man. But what about all of you, my friends? What do you think occurred to little Wesley? Thanks a lot for observing me up until this point, and I will see you in the subsequent video.